Washington, where 13 Russian nationals have been charged with conspiracy to tamper with the U.S. election process. These are the first indictments of Russians by special counsel Robert Mueller. The Justice Department says that the group aimed to undermine confidence in the U.S. democracy during the 2016 election, posing as grassroots activists. The DOJ is now alleging, is not alleging that the Trump campaign officials were knowingly involved. The president ignored questions about this as he left the White House for Mar-a-Lago on Friday. But at a security conference in Munich Saturday, National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster did react, especially in light of the administration's efforts to collaborate with Russia on the issue of cybersecurity. I would just say that we, we would love to have a cyber dialogue when, when Russia is sincere. Uh, about about curtailing its its uh, sophisticated form of espionage, what you might call this modern day sort of form of Moskarovka, uh, sort of enabled uh, en enabled by modern technology, and I think that day will be coming because we're becoming more and more adept at tracing the origins of this espionage and subversion, uh, and as you can see with the FBI indictment, uh, the evidence is now really incontrovertible and available in the public domain. Franco Ordonez is in Washington. He's a White House correspondent for McClatchy and a co-host of McClatchy's Majority Minority podcast. Franco, you know, the president's largely downplayed Russian involvement in, in the election. Earlier this week, the intelligence leaders, they testified on Capitol Hill that the president himself had not directed them to pursue this issue. How can the intelligence community counter interference if the White House doesn't seem interested? I mean, it's it's ways like this. I mean, this, you know, you were just playing that point that McMaster was making. The last point he made was that this is information. This evidence is now public. It's not only incontrovertible, but it's also out there in the public domain. The intelligence agencies have known this for a long time, that Russia has been meddling um, in our elections and wanted to meddle in our elections, but it's kind of been a little bit squishy, and some of this evidence hasn't been able to been, it's been classified and hasn't been able to be public. Now it's out there. Now we know that Mueller did some very deep digging, um, and McMaster, in a way, you could say he was actually speaking to the president and saying, you can't deny this anymore. Anymore. It's mm. not a hoax. You know, Russia's former ambassador to the U.S., Sergei Kislyak, dismissed the allegations and his word that he used saying that this was fantasies. So just so we're clear about this at this point, is there any doubt at this point that the Russian government was behind these efforts? I think there's a, the only person who might have some doubt uh, on the U.S. side seems to be uh, our president of the United States. At least that's the, the image that you're seeing. But we all expected, uh, everyone expected that the Russians were going to say that this was a hoax, that this was a fantasy. They've been saying this has been a witch hunt for a long time. Um, so even Republicans, it's not just the president uh, who is, I mean, it's the president who's denying, even Republicans are acknowledging and saying this is something uh, that needs to be looked at and this is very real. Mm. So I want to turn now to the Florida high school massacre. It's reignited really uh, the gun debate again. Parents, victims, the Parkland sheriff, Scott Israel, all calling for stricter gun laws. Students across the country are planning walkouts on this issue. How do you think this is going to play out in Washington now? Uh, it, you know, it's 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 very interesting. We shall see. You know, this has happened before. There has been no talk as of yet of leadership, of uh, calling for renewed talks on legislation. It is sadly a broken record where something like this will happen uh, and nothing necessarily is done. What I do see different this time is that what you pointed out is that the kids are coming out and the kids are speaking. If they're able to wrestle this narrative um, out from the hands of politicians and away from special interest groups and start to say this is impacting us and be not only the face of this but also the voice of this, I could see that having. Uh, having a significant impact. Boy, would that be incredible, too, to see this youth of America do something like that. Uh, Franco, I want to ask you, finally, though, the Senate, when you talk about immigration, they had rejected immigration proposals that were brought to the floor Thursday afternoon. The president's deadline for DREAMers is looming. Do you get the sense the White House is going to reassess their priorities on this? I don't know. I mean, that is a million dollar question. The White House is definitely uh, sticking to their guns on these four pillars, one of which is legal immigration cuts. And that really is a no go for many Democrats and many Republicans as well. I just want to point out, um, you know, look, the House hasn't even started a conversation, immigration debate. The Senate is working hard the, uh, on this issue. There's bipartisan push. There's bipartisan ideas. None of 
which uh, the more popular ones that Trump is not supporting, the one he proposes is the least uh, supportive. All that said, I do feel that Trump wants a solution. I think there is some jockeying. There is some leverage here. I do think he wants something. Um, I do think he wants a solution. I think he is torn by this. But man, it is, it is you know, this, this major cuts in legal immigration is going to be really hard pill for many in our Congress to swallow. Yeah, certainly will be, Franco. Thank you very much for joining us. Franco Ordonez in Washington.